Thank you for coming, Vanessa. Thank you. So tell us, who are you and what do you do? Hi. Mm -hmm. So I'm Vanessa Pandita. I am one of Chloe's best friends and I come from India. I live in New Delhi and I'm working as a marketer for a company called Alcobrew that deals with alcohol. We have a couple of our own whiskey brands and yeah, I do the marketing for them, the brand campaigns, the advertisements, whatever brand communication goes out. So yeah, I deal with it. And along with that, I'm also a fashion designer. I just finished my degree last year and it's been a year since I've been back in India. And I plan to merge my fashion line with the alcohol brand and I want to create a lifestyle product. So yeah, that's my goal. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so, so you, yes, you are a fashion designer, just graduated. Yes. And you did come back uh, from Italy where you did your master's. Master's in fashion design, yeah. Yeah, from Florence. Yes. You came back to India and then you started working for... Uh, My father, yes. It's fairy, a family business. Fairy dad's yeah. um, business. Yeah. That's really cool. And I saw you navigating the, the you know, the transition. Yes. <laughs> yeah. From living in Italy and, and doing your master's yeah. to coming back home and starting to work and and all that. And, and juggling both things. So yes. you're, you're working full time, but you're also on the side launching your fashion your line. fashion line. Yes. Um, so that's a lot. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so my my question to you, I have many questions, but one of them is how do you combine living in India and expressing yourself um, in a fashionable way? I mean as hard as it is to like express yourself considering how the society is but I think that's the most important thing that you express yourself no matter who you are so my way of expression is fashion so it's like a lot of my days my outfits are based on how I'm feeling I don't care if I go to work so there are days when I'm just wearing my denim jacket and a loose shirt and slacks and I'm like yeah trace my day off <laughs> but it's still very chic <laughs> of course, because as I said, my output in life is directly proportional to the way I dress. Mm -hmm. Because it does make you feel empowered, it does make a difference how you carry yourself, how you feel. So clothes do that for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there are days when I'm dressed up like a princess and I'm conquering all my emails, blazing through all the meetings. So yeah, that's there. Yeah, but so, yeah. how, like, because I mean obviously I have been, I have been to India. Yes. Um, how you can't wear everything you want yes in india mm -hmm. or like yeah it depends where you go yes. so how how do you navigate that what what do you wear for what you know how how do you where do you draw the line in yes. terms of like okay no i can't wear that mm -hmm. so it's like obviously ultimately it's work so i can't be all glam jam all the time but then I do go for parties and outings and there it's like where I let myself out loose completely. So my friends are literally like, so when sometimes when they see me straight out of work, they're like, okay, this is business Vanessa. And then when I'm out partying with them, they're like, okay, this is Vanessa version to glam Vanessa. <laughs> then there's a part of me which is like completely pajama girl. And so sometimes when I'm at home just chilling, they're like, okay, this is lazy Vanessa. <laughs> What's left now? Is there any other Vanessa? Dehati Vanessa? Banjara Vanessa? But yeah, it's just, it's a form of expression and yeah, that's how I kind of segregate. It's like, okay, today was not such a fashionable day at work. So yeah, maybe the next party I'll go more all out kind of thing. Okay. It's just like that. Okay, cool. But yeah, I know it's very clothes centric. Mm. Yeah. Um, one of the interesting questions, my question to you is how you know how does being a woman affect you in india because obviously a lot of things are said about you know the the condition of women and how women are being treated in india and obviously you live in a big city in mm -hmm. new delhi so it's probably different there um but you know how 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 is your experience as a woman in india is it is it good is it bad you know are the advantages or disadvantages 
Okay, so the experience is not bad. So for me, it's like I've seen both sides of the spectrum. So I've lived abroad and I've seen how people are open here and you know, there's nothing wrong in dressing the way however you want to dress. And then I've seen India as well where people are very shy and coy even if they want to dress up well. But so honestly, there are days when I'm just like, oh shit, I shouldn't wear this, oh shit, I, don't, I shouldn't do this. But at the end of the day, I know I'm not doing anything wrong and I just go out there and do whatever I want. And then what you said about women in rural areas who feel underconfident and who don't have such exposure, I'd still say that there are women in those areas as well who are doing what they want to do because they're not listening to the society. Like they're not, they don't feel pressurized by all this. So I think at the end of the day, it just matters like how much it matters, like how much you love yourself and how much you respect yourself to just put yourself out there. I don't think society makes a difference at that point. So that's for me as well. Yes, I'll have shitty days, but at the end of the day, I'm like, listen, are you happy being like this? No, you don't like it. Go do something about it. Doesn't matter what the people say. So mm. yeah. What about safety? Safety. Okay, I won't say it's not a concern, but I do feel it's blown out of proportion a bit. And the media and the people are not doing much to help the situation as well. So for example, my parents, they're not, they're very conservative. Like they're not very comfortable with me going out partying. And I, any, anyways, go out partying and I come back at four in the morning and stuff. And I have my set of friends who are with me. So I think that's cool, but there are times when I've come back alone as well, you know, taking the Uber and all. I mean, it's been safe for me till now. It's not like it's completely dangerous and stuff, you know. So I think it also depends on what experiences people have. But in my experience, it's not as bad as it's made. Like at least in Delhi, like the metropolitan cities. Mm. So yeah, go out and stay out late till the night. Okay, you haven't had like scares or... No. No? No. Wow, that's really yeah. good. That's really, really good. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I've been out as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's always on your mind. Yeah. Sort of. But so far, I've never had any issue. Um, and I ne I've never felt like it wasn't safe for me because I was a woman. The, the other thing as well is that you usually try to be a com you know with I'm someone people, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and and people are very understanding of that and they yes. they would they would do the extra they would go the extra yes. mile to take you home yes. or at least put you in a in a taxi Safe, yeah. you know or tell you to sleep at theirs you know because it's too late now so um i think uh, there's a lot of uh, there is concern and and then you can feel it yes you know yeah but yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. I, at least in Delhi. Mm. Yeah. Even in Mumbai yeah. as well, because I've been to Mumbai and, I, and I, I haven't necessarily felt, maybe outside Mumbai, like now yeah. Mumbai was a little bit more like, okay, we're dodgy. Dodgy, yeah. But, but in Mumbai, overall, I felt like it was fine. Mumbai, they say, yeah, it's very safe for girls, like, no, no, no comparison to Delhi, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. On top of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, how's it been for you, um, you know, not being supported by, by your parents and, and the things that you, that you truly want to do? How do you overcome that? Because I, I've seen many other Indian women who their family not liking what they do is, is enough of a reason for them to stop right there mm -hmm. and not, not pursue and not, not continue you know, to follow their dreams or whatever. It, it, this, it's not even that they're doing something wrong or bad or, you know, but they just want to pursue a particular career and their parents are not happy with that. And so just because of that, they're just really going to put that aside and mm -hmm. just not even consider yeah. trying it. So h how did you continue? <laughs> how did you and how do you continue to overcome that? So... Knowing the situation in India and addressing the women in India, I mean, I know it can be hard and women are from different backgrounds, but all I'd firstly say is just try, try and keep on trying. Because it's like, for me, it's the dream, what I truly love that pushes me, that motivates me. It's like, I am afraid of doing things, but still like, but I'd love to do that, so I keep on going. And also at the same time, 
yes my parents were not very supportive but at the same time i know that they love me and i love them and it wasn't like this stuff you know they support me in the first go it took a lot of time yeah. and effort and a lot of conflict and a lot of conversations a lot of conversations but they did come around and i'm also aware that this won't be the same for other women but yeah. all i'd say is just keep on going keep on trying and you will definitely find a way it's just like you know if you put it out there in the universe things will happen mm. so yeah just keep on trying and just go for what you want let nothing stop you mm. yeah and that's what i do it's like there's still a lot of things that i'd love to do and my parents are not fully supportive of it probably not even aware of it <laughs> <laughs> but yes it's like low key i'm still pursuing it you know it's like Of course there will come a time and I'll have to have a conversation and stuff but till then just keep on doing you man like no one's stopping us we don't mm. need anyone's permission so yeah nice thank you for that um cool so what would you tell a young woman who's wanting to pursue her dreams but finds uh <laughs> finds herself struggling <laughs> in the face of you know disapproval <laughs> from her parents um what what would you what would you suggest well if I'd someone came to you and said hey this is my dream but mm -hmm. my parents won't let me mhm mm so i'd be like you still keep on pursuing your dreams and listen to your parents and just be honest about what you really want to do yeah and just keep on saying that out loud Keep on saying that to whoever will listen or whoever won't listen, because ultimately you stand for yourself. You know, you're the one who's gonna go and achieve that. Who mm. wants that? So yeah, just go for what you want. Your parents will listen to you one day, because you have to live your life and not your parents. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I guess uh, there there's two little things that came up for me. Is one? Oh yes, that. You're you're still doing what you want, uh, and you're still going for what you love, but you you still love your parents and you're yes. respectful of them and you live in their house and and like I've seen you I've stayed at your house and I've seen you, you know, interact with your parents and yeah sometimes you guys have your fights and stuff, um, but I mean who doesn't? That's normal. Yeah, yeah that's normal. But um, on on a general level level like you're very. Uh, thoughtful and and um there's a lot of respect for your elders yeah and i i think that's something that i really like about india actually that there's a lot of respect in for the people around you mm -hmm. most of the time what i see is that you know you don't react or you 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 try to Stay be calm. diplomatic yeah. about stuff and And yeah, like when you're at home, you do it their way. Yeah. And when you're outside of the house, you do it your way. Yeah. So that that's um that's that. You don't have to get into a massive conflict, conflict yeah, with your parents. Yeah, yeah, with your parents and like move out of the house and stuff. But I mean, if that's what you want, then then go ahead and do that. Yeah. That'll be easier for you. But when you're still <clears throat> yeah, dependent, it's yes. not always easy because you're dependent. Yes. Um, and most of the women in India, the, the time for them to leave their house is when they is when they get married. And that's when they leave their home. So it's not always uh, no easy. like yeah. Because also going for your dreams requires a bit of money sometimes. Yes. You know. So you know, like you 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 you're doing pretty well. So when you ask your dad for something after some resistance, yeah, there's usually a giving of <laughs> something. You know, but but when you're perhaps. You know there are people coming from uh, lower yes. income and and they're dependent on someone and they don't have the financial power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but what do you think? I mean, I I think when 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 there's a will, there's There is a, a way. way. I really believe that. This. That's true. Yes, yes, that's true. I mean, it, it's a choice at the end of the day. You know, mm. it's like there will be situations which will. be very hurtful or painful of course yeah so it's like even with my family when i w i decided to do fashion it was like i was literally killing everyone's expectations you know <laughs> like there were <laughs> random people coming up and telling me you broke your parents heart oh my god yeah, it literally happened oh that's so bad 
That's very hurtful yeah. for someone to say. Yeah, literally like my uh, father's colleagues at work, they were coming up to me and telling me that and I'm just like a 21 year old standing there like, hey, hey, hey. Right, okay. So much responsibility. Yes. Like, you're in charge of your father's heart. Yes. <laughs> All of a sudden. Yeah, but I think that's what people don't realize. I think in India, I mean, I know about India and Europe, but in India, there's a lot of pressure on the kids to fulfill their parents' dreams. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like they never actually get the time to even think about what they actually really love to do, you know. Mm. So for me, I'm lucky enough and touch word that my parents were open in that way. They sent me abroad to study. Yeah, that's true. So for four years I studied. That's true. Yeah. Let's give them credit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I <something>. am grateful <laughs> to them. Yes, it's true. And so those four years are actually, I actually got a lot of exposure and the time to think what truly makes me happy. And also I was always like a mature kid. So like since a very young age, I wasn't like, it wasn't money that was driving me or society. It was always like what made me happy. Mm. So towards the end, I remember of my final year at St. Andrews, it was like, I just felt this longing and unfulfilled heart. Like I just felt bogged down because it was like I knew, like my dad had planned an MBA for me at LSE or something like that. But I was just like, I've, I've done economics, you know, and that's all. Like, I don't feel like I'm learning something new. I'm not growing. Like, what is it adding to me as a human being? Like, is it like I'll start a job at a bank and that's it? Like, yeah. I'm sorry. I feel there's a lot more to me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then I remember, I was like, what? what is there what's obvious like you know what do i do mm -hmm. in my free time and i was sitting there my laptop was open and i turned around and i was like like for the past three months i've been scrolling clothes for my past time like when i do nothing like literally i just go on the website and just be like oh what's the new oh that's a cool dress mm -hmm. and i was never a fashion person i was always a tomboy you've told me you've seen me yeah yeah and then i remember the next week i was like okay so fashion clothes the next week, I really experimented with my clothes and every day, someone or the other gave me a compliment. Wow, you dress really well. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is really cool. And I was just like, something is not okay. Like, is this just me imagining things or is this like a sign? So I'm really a big believer of like science. universe and science. And I was like, whoa. Okay, so I was like, okay, fashion. And then I was like, but then shit, my parents would be pissed. Then I was like, okay, fashion Shit. management. Shit. Yeah, okay. I'll do fashion Shit. management. So I was like, cool, that's like a mix of management, business and fashion. I'm also happy. My parents are also happy. Mm -hmm. So I started checking out courses and stuff, but still I didn't like find something really cool. And then I met you and Arush. Yes. And you introduced me to the natural success courses and stuff. Yeah. And I think you actually even did a reading on me. Yes. And we had the we first, time, the first I met time. you. Yeah. <laughs> and you come up to me and you're like, I feel you want to do fashion. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm just staring at you like, she's never met me. What the fuck? How does she know what's been up with me in life? <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about fashion, marketing, management. You're like, you're compromising. Yeah, you're making your own clothes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what you said. And I was just yeah. like, in my I'm like, fucking hell. Like, she's just met me. And I'm like already dying thinking of fashion and management. And she tells me there's no management also in there. It's like fashion and designing straight away. And you've been dying since, yes. since then. <laughs> you've been dying since then. Oh man, it was it was damn funny. Yeah. And I remember having this conversation with my father about one to fashion design. So thankfully my dad, he has quite a temper, but then he is very open-minded and he comes around like if you give him his time and stuff. Mm. So I remember I was sitting in my room and then I texted Arush. I was like, you know, I'm gonna go have to chat now with dad. I'm gonna say fashion management. And he just said one line, do not compromise. Mm -hmm. I was like, fuck you. Then I remember I went to the door. Then I literally came back. I was like, what the fuck am I thinking? <laughs> then I literally went again. Then I was like, no, Vanessa, no. I came back and got in my bed. 15 minutes later, I finally just threw the blanket and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go chat with my dad. <laughs> so I go to the room across. And he's there lying in his bed on his phone. And, and then I go, typical, imagine Bollywood fashion. Amitabh Bachchan and Shah Rukh Khan and Kami Khushi Kami yes. Kam style. You're like, Papa. Exactly. Ha, <laughs> 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 bitta. Papa, I need to talk to you. He's like, yes, tell me. And I'm like, 
I don't want to do so I'd mentioned about like fashion and fashion management mm-hmm. but I didn't say design I was like I don't want to do fashion management I want to do fashion designing and then he suddenly looked up from his phone he's like why I'm like I don't know but there's this really strong feeling inside of me that I just want to do fashion Mhm. Then he's like what about management then but you've always known because I was always like a very ambitious girl and always who knew what you wanted kind of person. Have you? Yeah. Okay. So economics I knew I wanted to do. You, but then after that I lost my shit. I did economics. Okay. <laughs> no, I said you did want to do that. Yeah. Interesting. Because I didn't know what else to do at the time. No? That's true. And I was like <laughs> highest grades that's my thing. That gets you anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, <clears throat> then I spoke to my dad about it. Like I don't know. I was just blabbering because I was so scared of even saying this. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, but then he just sat listening and he's like, "Cool, I'll think over it." And in the meanwhile, I'd already checked out the courses and stuff, and I actually knew what course I wanted to do. So I found the course at Institute of Marangoni. It was like an integrated, intensive course for fashion design, and no prerequisites required. Because generally for fashion, you need like a portfolio. Mm-hmm. You need to have like a year or three months experience. You need to know how to draw. You need to know how to be able to like sew and stuff, and I was like, "Fuck this! I need." I didn't yeah. know shit. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Cool, I found a course." Then I told my dad about it. Of course, they were just like, "You know what the fuck you're doing?" Mm-hmm. But they still came around. I'm cutting out a lot of nasty comments and <laughs> words. Things were said. Yes, <laughs> but so yeah, they funded me obviously because I was like, "Fuck out all the money for this." which I'm very thankful to them for. And yeah, then I went to Florence in Italy. Best two years of my life. Mm. But I would like to mention this for my first day at school. So my dad came and dropped me and my first class was pattern making. So you know the tailor master in India one. And I go there and I enter. So my dad dropped me off and I'm just like, what the fuck is this? Mhm. So we weren't like a lot of students. We were like 7 8 of us. We had small batches. and i'm just standing there it was a 2 hour class and like people are like doing their own thing cuz all of them had some background in fashion in a way or not did work and i was just like fresh off the boat <laughs> so i'm standing there like pattern making hmm. what exactly is this yeah <laughs> and i'm one of them explaining i didn't know me. i had to know how to yeah make like fuck fashion design i thought it's for like sketch and imagine things and that i'm good with that imagine things that's my thing <laughs> and just bow down when yeah. the catwalk show is done yeah right <laughs> the master she makes all the clothes but turns out it was a very important lesson and yeah i somehow managed to pass that i won't lie i, I failed a semester in that because i had to sew a blazer and i just was like fuck i cannot do this i remember staying up till 5 in the morning and i was like you I, failed a semester a, a term one term but because we had like um, grading collated collated grading so The next oh, time I scored better, so that pushed my grade okay, higher, okay, overall grade. So yeah, I didn't have to reset or anything. But that was one. Mm. But it was an important lesson, and it is important for fashion designers to know the technicalities. Mm, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for that. No His- worries. Historical <laughs> walk. Uh, walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Last question. Yes. What is a cool girl, and how? to become one what it what does it take to be one to be a cool girl a cool girl is the one who goes for what she wants no matter what and what does it take to be one just know that you are one because everyone's a cool girl everyone knows or maybe doesn't know what they want but whether or not you're going after your dreams or not just know that you're a cool girl yeah but yes still go for what you want <laughs> don't listen to anyone Tell me yeah. for you and don't listen to anyone. Yeah, man. And just believe in yourself. That is the most important thing. Yeah. yeah. Have faith in yourself and know that you're going to do it and you will do it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we had a we had a chat about courage and yes. like well, going yes. going for the going for what you love really requires a lot of courage. Yes. Um and um I think even if you're like I had this thing before where I I thought a cool girl is someone who's living their purpose. But it's actually not everyone knows their purpose. Yes. But you're a cool girl if you're 
I came to I came down to this. You're a cool girl if you are committed to living your best life yes. and you're actively pursuing that. So yes. you know, you you don't perhaps you're not there yet where you know your purpose, but you're actively seeking and exploring and um, doing the things that you want to do. For cool girls, I think the most important thing is you should allow yourself the permission to be cool. Like go after what you want because yeah. the only person, as it is rightly said, stopping yourself from living your best life is you, the person, like you yourself. So yeah. Well, good luck with everything, Vanessa. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for uh, agreeing to doing this interview. I mean. I, I, I could argue, oh, you're my best friend, you're my client, this is why you're on the interview, but, you know, I, and I asked myself the question, like, why do I want to interview Vanessa, and it's because I really have seen you grow, um, like, when, when did we start this, like, three and a half years yeah, ago, something yeah, like that, yeah. and, I, and I've really seen you grow from, like, this little scared <laughs> girl, you were scared of everything, Yeah. you were so scared of everything, you were scared of what the waiter would think about you. You were scared of your dad. You were scared of the world. You were scared, scared of your own friends. Like just yep. scared of what people would think of you. Like just so, you know, yeah. reserved and, and all that. And, and you just really, uh, you started expressing yourself more and more in the world. And, and you, you found uh, your joy, you know, what makes you happy. Fashion, you went for it. You yeah. really... You know, I, I've seen your journey and your growth, and you're and you're still very young. You're 25, so you started when you were 22, uh, which which is a huge advance. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a huge advantage. Yeah. you know, compared to to, to others yes. uh, who get into a career, work for 10, 15 years, and then realize that they're not. Yes satisfied and they're too deep in yeah. you know and they're so attached to their comfort zone etc that it's very hard for them to get out like in you know because you're starting early you have so much more momentum yes to very build true. so and you're doing amazing things and just character wise like how someone can grow and yeah you still have things to achieve yes you know yes. your fashion line is still not out mm -hmm. but you're working on it you have a deadline yeah you know you have that project and and you're very passionate about it so and i have no doubt that you're gonna create it like i've Absolutely. seen you i've seen you, <laughs> i've seen you come up with shit i'm like she pulled that off man that was really cool <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so yeah yeah it's really it's really it's really cool i think you're you're one of the few ones that are all in. Yeah, man. You know, and, and yes, you've got your challenges, and yes, you've got obstacles, and your circumstances are not perfect and stuff, and, and you, you feel very isolated all the way in India, yeah. you know, like, without, uh, without me. <laughs> without me. <laughs> but without, you know, without access to, uh, yes. to such level of freedom and, yeah. and, and things like that. So, and independence. So, but you still managed to to do your own thing, and you, you, you never gave up. No way. So that's very admirable. You Thank know, you. like one of my values is courage. So yes, you know, you that's definitely something that I see in you. Yeah, but I think when you have a goal, when you have something in of mind course. that you love, it gives you courage. Yes. You know, just like people would do anything to feed their ch feel their children. Yes. They Actually. just go out and they just do it. No matter what. Because yeah. they have this kid and they love their kid and they're going to make it happen. Yeah. So you got to find that thing that <laughs> makes you feel like it's got to happen. Like yes. there is no other way. There is no other option for you. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>